I never really jumped into the trend of using an external recorder. I had never really seen the benefit against the added workflow to using one. But then I started working with raw video files at work and realized it's not as scary as people make it out to be. And plus, the SL2S now records for 4K 12-bit 422 ProRes RAW recording. So in this video, I'm going to take it out, test it with the Ninja 5, with my SL2S and share some results, my opinions, and if I think it's worth it for you to invest in one. I first started working with raw video footage a little over a year ago when my work picked up a red Komodo. There was a bit of a learning curve, but I was blown away at the flexibility it offered in post. I thought, hey, if picking up the Ninja 5 allows me to have this much flexibility with my L-Log footage, that would be incredible. And it does, but only if you use Final Cut Pro, which I don't. So as of now, unless Apple decides to open up ProRes workflows and Adobe decides to let Premiere Pro work, then I'm stuck. But it's not all lost, the Ninja 5 also allows for 12-bit 422 recording, and I also find that recording through the Ninja makes the L-Log files easier to work with. So let's jump into the footage and talk about it a little bit. After, I'll open it up in Premiere Pro, and we will take a deeper look at the raw files, and I'll talk more about the workflow. It's fall here and we have been really lucky to have some of the most beautiful sunrises and weather. I went out and filmed some of what I find to be beautiful footage. The first thing I noticed about these clips is the smooth transition between the pastel colors in the sky. That 12-bit is really showing off there and it's stunning. I like to expose for the highlights in my work and restore the shadows in post. When I was working with these files, I was really impressed with the latitude of the clips. One of the things that I definitely didn't like was the added weight and size to the camera. If you've used an SL2, it is pure metal and feels like a brick on its own. Using the external recorder definitely adds weight and also takes away from the carryability of the camera. With the added monitor, you need to have power and I can see this rig getting quite big pretty quickly. I do have an 8 sin cage ordered and plan to rig this out with a V-mount battery and rails, but I don't have all the pieces yet. It does complicate the filming process, but I don't feel like that is worth missing out on having these beautiful files. I do, however, like having a larger screen, so I think the pros outweigh the cons for me. Now let's open up Premiere Pro and take a look at the raw files. When you first bring the files in, they look, well, bad. You have to tell the program what codec you are putting in, so go to Effects, Control, Source, and I found that Rec 2020 slash Nlog gets things going in the right direction. There isn't a dedicated L-Log setting, but the SL2S records in Rec 2020, so that works. One of the downsides of this is you have to go and change this for each clip, unless I'm missing something. From there, add your conversion LUT. Personally, I love the Buttery LUTs L-Log conversion LUTs. Buttery LUTs isn't a sponsor of this video, but they did provide me with a discount code, so use code LUCAS15 at checkout for 15% off. Then I add grain. It depends on the look I'm going for, but I generally use overlay and I like the 35mm film grain from Ezco. And finally, I add another adjustment layer to the sequence and add my creative LUT. 
for this right now I'm loving the 606 LUTs by Eric Floberg, specifically the Avondale LUT. After that I'll make any adjustments to tint or color and make sure each clip looks good and I'm ready to go. So who is this for? I think I'll continue using this workflow especially for client work but if you are a video professional I see this as a must to be able to have the flexibility of raw when shooting for clients. If you're a hobbyist or filming more run and gun I would consider if you actually need that much more output from your camera and if the added weight and workflow is worth it. Personally I'll use it for most of my work but personal stuff I'll film without it. That's it. Leave a comment if you have any questions, like and subscribe, it really does make a big difference and to my Fuji community I've got a video for you guys coming out soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.